We meet again, teach. Know why you're here? I'm not your teacher. I'm your headmistress. Oh, um, am I getting some type of reward or something? Far from it. You tried to steal your exam from the teacher's lounge. What do you have to say for yourself? I wouldn't get caught with something like that. Besides, this is the prestigious school of Van Lu. Our top priority is to do everything and to say everything. <coughs> Stop with the lies. The pictures speak for themselves. You spoke about Van Lu. Do you even know who Elizabeth Van Lu is? Um, isn't it that famous lady that likes to pass notes and vegetables? Anyway, off to the most important thing. What's my punishment, Teach? First off, you can take those glasses off. This is a men in black. And second of all, there's way more to her than just passing notes and vegetables. Born October 17th, 1818, Elizabeth Van Loo was raised in a prominent Southern family. Her father, John, moved to Richmond in his teen years and by his mid-thirties had a successful hardware business. Her mother Eliza stayed home, of course, and took care of Elizabeth and her two other siblings, John and Anna. But wait, if she was a spy during the Civil War, doesn't that mean that she was on the Confederate side? I mean, she is a Southerner. Yes, one would think. But although she was born in a slaveholding household, while attending a Quaker school in Pennsylvania, she developed anti-slavery feelings. After which, she would try to urge her father to release the slaves at her house, but her father would repeatedly refuse to do so, and this caused many arguments between the two in the house. But after her father's death in 1843, she urged her mother and brother to release the slaves at the house. This time, her efforts worked, and they were freed slaves who now had the choice to continue working for them as paid servants. The inheritance she earned during this time would be used as money to buy and free slaves of other family members. Wait, does this make her an abolitionist? No, she herself has said, I was never an abolitionist. Abolitionists are fanatics who will stop at nothing to achieve their goals. I have always spoke out against slavery, for which I pay dearly in the loss of many friends. But I was never a fanatic. Elizabeth Van Lu grew up in the years leading up to the Civil War, when tensions were high between the North and the South. And after it erupted, the North, Union, and the South, Confederacy, over the issue of slavery, the North, who wanted to abolish it, while the South wanted to keep it. Her first act as a Union force advocate was when she began volunteering at Libby Prison in Richmond, where captured Union soldiers were held. However, it was not easy, because she first had to convince the prison overseer, Lieutenant David H. Todd. How did she convince him? And when is the spy stuff coming up? Yes, yes, the spy thing comes up later. But this was a hard task. Since she is in Richmond and most of the people, including Lieutenant Todd, were pro-slavery, she used her charm and charisma to convince him. Actually, she herself has said that she could basically convince anyone to doing whatever she wanted by her flirtatious nature. Ooh! Many of the Richmond newsletters began to criticize her and her mother, who agreed, for wanting to aid the enemies in the prison. Such newsletters were Richmond Inquirer and the Richmond Dispatch. When she and her mother were finally granted permission, her act as a spy would begin. Ooh, the good stuff! She would send secret messages back and forth with the prisoners by using secret compartments in baked dishes. She obtained information given to her from the prison guards and Lieutenant Todd, who carelessly shared some of the upcoming objectives of the Confederate Army. Wow, that's cool! She helped prisoners escape and kept them temporarily at times in her own home. Once, when two prisoners were aided by her to escape the prison, they told their stories to many of the other Union soldiers back at the safe camp. Word got to Benjamin Butler, who then enlisted her as an official Union spy. This started her career as a spy, in which she sent secret messages in invisible ink hidden in hollowed-out vegetables, seamed skirts and dresses, and soles of shoes. Wow, this is so legit. James Bond doesn't have anything on her. All of her messages in her, in her career went without ever being intercepted by the enemy. Wow, without ever being intercepted by the enemy? What's next? Yep, and while working under General Butler... 
Van Loo was noticed by General Ulysses S. Grant, and after the Civil War was concluded, then President Grant promoted her to be postmistress of Richmond in order to thank her for all of her spying. Grant even said that she was the, she delivered the most valuable information retrieved from Richmond during the war. She also collaborated with one of her past slaves, named Mary Bowser, who happened to, to get a servant job at the Confederate White House. She and Mary would work together and retrieve messages from the White House to the, and send them to the Union High Command. She stayed in contact with many of the soldiers she had helped during the Civil War, one of whom was Paul Revere, the grandson of Paul Revere. Wow, Paul Revere is in this? Not quite. His grandson, though. Van Loo was praised greatly after the war was won by the soldiers and commanders of the victorious Union. However, in the North, although she was a hero, in the South, and especially Richmond, she was outcasted and branded a traitor. Her inheritance had run dry and her social standing taken. She found herself living off the money that the Union gave her and the monthly money she would occasionally receive from past soldier families. She died in Richmond in September 25, 1900, still an outcast. But right before her death, Elizabeth revealed that she had kept a diary hidden in the backyard of her estate of the time in which she was a spy. Oh, you're absolutely right. Elizabeth Van Loo was essential in the Union's victory. It makes me want to work hard and be just like her. Yep, that's right. She even pretended to act crazy. Thus, her nickname was Crazy Bat. More importantly, I'll invoice you the days for your detention, and I don't want to see you back in here. Hmm, I guess that's fair. Anyway, this was very informative. Thanks for everything. Thank you for watching Discovering Elizabeth Van Loo, written and directed by Kristen Howard, featuring Jasmine Howard.